All right, I'm gonna s start baking more in the next few weeks. So I'm making something easy this time, biscuits. And I am just pretty much copying Alton Brown's Reloaded recipe, but replacing the buttermilk with milk and a little bit of cream of tartar. And the recipe just starts with some flour, uh, baking powder, a surprisingly large amount, cream of tartar, and I realize now that uh, you should probably mix this or sift this now uh, because I forgot to mix it later on, but it wasn't really a problem. And oh, salt. I did have fine salt, so I took my sea salt and I grind it out in my palms. I should have been a little bit more aggressive with the salt though. And my fat of choice is a combination of lard, which I cut into very uh, small rectangles, and butter, which I also cut into uh, small pieces as well. And then uh, the next step is to uh, thoroughly mix the dry goods and then break apart the fat uh, with the flour. And in this method, uh, the mixture will still be crummy at this stage, and that's pretty normal. And once you're done mixing, make a little well and add uh, in this case, milk or buttermilk. And once this is stirred, it will be very, very sticky, uh, a little bit hard to work with. So you will need some uh, flour for your work surface. And what differentiates really, really good biscuits from just okay biscuits like this is uh, working always with cold hands and mixing the biscuit very little. Um, but, I mean, if you follow this method, even if you mess up a little like this, uh, it'll still taste good. It just won't be amazing. And once the sticky mass is on the cutting board, I began to flatten it out a little bit and then start the fold. And basically all I'm doing is just uh, folding like a book uh, several times. And I think Alton Brown lists he does this like seven or eight times. And I try to get the dough off my fingers and from the inside the bowl and incorporate it uh, before I fold each time. And each fold, the dough will get much easier to work with. And once pretty much all the folds have been made, uh, just shape out uh, into a one inch thick uh, sheet. And you're supposed to take uh, sharp biscuit cutters or cookie cutters, punch down into rounds, straight down, and then twist. But uh, I... <laughs> I just cut it with a pizza cutter to make square biscuits, which is probably sacrilege, but still tastes good. And what I'm doing here is just uh, lightly marking the top to see if um, each, each piece will be about the same size. And then I just go ahead and just cut down. 
and usually if you make this much dough you should get eight pretty big rounds in this case I got nine squares and another reason I like to cut it like this is that uh, if you make biscuits with the scraps they're never as good as when they're first punched out and this way they will all taste the same and then put them all on a baking tray people really like to put them shoulder to shoulder like this even though in most baking recipes people tell you not to do this for cookies and and other baked treats but I'll just go ahead and just follow and the oven temperature is 450 degrees Fahrenheit which is very hot um, I cooked 10 minutes and then I rotated and then I cooked for about six minutes and in the end the tops were pretty golden brown texture was nice but not not amazing um, you get something that's both flaky and kind of not chewy but puffy and soft and I put it in this uh, bowl with a clean kitchen towel to keep them warm and I think it's, it's assumed that you eat this with your family so it'll all disappear in one day. But I, I only eat a couple of them. And uh, after the steam is gone, I just store it away um, with a loose lid on top. Anyways, thank you for listening to me ramble and have a nice rest of your day.